The top hat drinking bird or the dippy bird was once a really popular science toy because it was a good example of a thermodynamic engine, but like lots of things, it died a death. However, courtesy of research in China and Hong Kong, it's making a comeback as a clean energy generator that could one day power your phone or your smartwatch. What they've done is taken this toy and changed it into an engine capable of using the power of water evaporation to generate electricity. What they've done is a new method that works by converting the energy produced by the bird's characteristic back and forth movement into electrical power. The way the Dippy Bird works is actually pretty straightforward. There are two glass bulbs joined together by a long glass tube filled with methylene chloride. Now, methylene chloride is a pretty volatile liquid and evaporates really easily. But when you dip the bird's beak in the water, then the water on the beak will evaporate. And of course, there's a cooling effect with evaporation that cools the methylene chloride, causes it to condense. This reduces the pressure and more methylene chloride is pulled up through the bulb because of the reduction in pressure. That disturbs the centre of gravity and the bird dips backwards and forwards drawing in water, evaporating it, drawing in water, evaporating it, and the same cycle will continue basically forever. It's the basis of the Minto wheel, a large version of which was built on Mythbusters and shown not to work very well. Lots of people have in fact tried to make this a generator before by using coils of wire and magnetic fields. The problem with this kind of thermodynamic engine, like the Minto wheel and the Dippy Bird, is they don't move particularly quickly, and unfortunately, when you're using magnets and wire, then the amount of voltage that you generate is directly related to the speed at which it moves, and so it was doomed to never producing very much. The genius of the new research is that instead of using magnets and a coil of wire, what they decided to use was triboelectric generation. And triboelectrification is that electrification of different materials that you get just by rubbing them together. Tribo is Greek for rub. So if you rub two materials together, they will create electricity. Of course, this is really well known, and it's being investigated for the creation of generators, nanogenerators, energy scavenging, and energy harvesting to run the Internet of Things. It's a super interesting topic that has lots of great application. Now, some materials will create a positive charge, and some materials will create a negative charge, just because they're of affinity for electrons. For example, this, which is polyethylene tetrathalate, or you might know it as sheet acetate, is tribopositive. So if I rub this against something that is tribonegative, this will collect a positive charge. This is kapton, and kapton is tribonegative. So if I rub those two together, I'll get a very high positive charge on here, and a very high negative charge on there. Now, of course, the problem really is collecting it. It's getting it and then doing something with it. That's the real challenge, because creating it is a piece of cake. Everybody's creating static all of the time. It just takes a little effort to actually collect it. Now, one great material is um, this stuff. This stuff is polytetrafluoroethylene. You'll know it as Teflon. This is Teflon tape sold for plumbing and gas. You can buy it in your local store on rolls just like this, and this is Teflon tape. It's very cool stuff, and it's also great if you want to do something like collecting electricity from rubbing. If we get a bit of aluminium, this stuff obviously is the aluminium tape that you get for ducting in HVAC. It's sticky on the back, so we can unroll our Teflon, stick it down, and create a Teflon sheet with an aluminium backing, which is exactly what's here. So this is a bit of aluminium. There you go, if you can see it there. That's an aluminium piece with some Teflon on top, and I've attached a crocodile clip to it. Now we need the opposite material, and in this case the opposite material is just aluminium. So I've got a bit of aluminium there. Now I've put Kapton on it so that I don't interfere, so I can hold the Kapton and I can do that with it, or that with it, basically rub the two together, and then we'll get an electric charge from them. Now I've put a crocodile clip on that because we need to be able to collect it. Now the thing actually works like this, actually contact transfer, and it's an alternating current when we do it this way around, so we need to put it through a rectifier, and what I've got there is a little rectifier bridge with two clips coming off of the plus and the minus. So I need my input here, and I take the input, which is 
my two aluminium sheets, one covered with Kapton and one covered with Teflon. The Teflon notice is facing up, the aluminium is touching the Teflon. Remember this Kapton is just here to stop me touching the aluminium and interfering. So now we've rectified the current, we want to do something with it. Now it doesn't produce huge amounts when we're looking at something like this and lifting it off and on. So what we're going to do is we're going to collect it in a capacitor. And here I've got a 1000 microfarad 50 volt capacitor. Because the research says that this will generate about 30 volts. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. But we can collect that. So if I connect today, um, let's have a look. Yep, negative to my negative and my positive to my positive, and I'm just reading the rectifier bridge to know which one's negative and which one's positive, and then I've connected it to my multimeter. Then we start to pump electricity into this capacitor, because remember I'm reading the charge on the capacitor. Now, this works really well just by doing that, but if you do it harder and faster, it works <laughs> even better. <laughs> flap about in the wind actually it can generate relatively quickly I mean you've got to remember what's touching here it's just this tiny little bit that's touching so it is generating quite a lot and charging that capacitor relatively quickly by having a bit of aluminium tape flap in the wind against some Teflon now the Teflon works really well but Kapton works really well as well and the best one actually is room temperature vulcanization silicon rubber or RTV rubber so if you were to make a film of rubber on your aluminium then that is one of the best ones. So what the researchers did was use exactly the same principle but attached it to a dippy bird and used FEP as the polymer which is a fluorinated polymer that you find as the contact sheet on resin printers. Then they used polypropylene as a brush against a copper surface. And doing this they were able to generate 100 volts just using 100 millilitres of water and they used that to test against various things like liquid crystal displays, temperature sensors and calculators. Of course they could have just used the water in a conventional way and turned a water wheel with it, but for that of course you need a handy river. But according to the survey, about 50% of the solar energy that hits the earth is taken up in the water cycle in evaporation. It represents a huge untapped energy source that could well be clean energy power for the future inspired by a children's toy. So I thought I would share it with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.